In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate Pearson's r, the correlation coefficient. Here's the symbol we use for the correlation coefficient. It's r sub xy. We use x and y in the subscript to basically represent the idea that we're correlating two variables, an x variable and a y variable. And this subscript is helpful because now we can differentiate this formula from the one of the range, which is just represented by r with no subscript. Now, if this is the first time you're looking at this formula, it might seem a little intimidating. It is a pretty ugly formula, and I'll give you that. However, I promise that, especially if you follow the steps I'm going to teach you today, it's actually a pretty easy problem to solve. If you took a minute or two to look at this formula, you would quickly realize that there's only six different values we need to find in order to solve the problem. Let's make a note of what those six values are now. First, we need n. n is simply our sample size. Next, we need sigma x. Sigma, remember, just means take the sum of whatever follows. So to find sigma x, we're going to end up adding up all the values in the x column. We also need sigma y. We need sigma x squared, which is simply the sum of the squared x values. Sigma y squared, the sum of the squared y values. And finally, sigma xy which is the sum of each x times y product. So our strategy is going to be to completely ignore the formula to start the problem and not worry about it until the very end. Instead, we're going to develop a table that I'll always encourage you to follow in order to find the six values that you need. This table will just naturally lead you there. Once you have those six values, you can just plug and chug, plug it into the final formula, and reduce down to get your correlation. So here we have some data. Let's say that x represents people's anxiety scores and y represents people's depression scores. So we want to look to find, is there a correlation between people's anxiety and their depression? I would always recommend starting this table by numbering off your participants, creating your index column. One, two, three, four, five. And in this case, we have six people in our study. So notice we already have the first term that we need. Our sample size here is six. We just need to find the rest, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. So we already have our x and our y. We'll kind of take care of these values in a little bit. Let's go ahead and do some of the rest of these. So first, we're going to write down x squared. To get your x squared values, you're simply going to take your x values, square them, and put them here. So 5 squared is going to be 25. 9 squared is going to be 81. 10 squared is going to be 100. 3 squared is going to be 9. 5 squared is again 25, and 7 squared is 49. Next, we need our y squared column. This is the same idea. We take our y values, square them, and put them here. So 6 squared is 36, 11 squared is 121, 6 squared again 36, 4 squared is 16, 36 once more, and 9 squared is 81. So the last thing we need is our x times y products. And this is pretty easy to get as well. We're just going to take each x value and multiply it by the corresponding y value. So 5 times 6 equals 30. 9 times 11 is 99. 10 times 6 is 60. 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times 6 is again 30, and we're almost there. 7 times 9 is 63. So this is great. We've made a lot of progress, and we just have one more step to take care of here. We have to take care of the sigmas. So I'm going to go ahead and put a note here for myself. I always encourage you to do this as well. Write down a sigma to remind yourself that you need to take the sum of each column. So sigma x, the sum of the x values that we're going to need here, is simply adding up 5 plus 9 plus 10 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. If you do that, you're going to get 39. Adding up the next column gets you 42, and this is going to be sigma y. Adding up the next column, sigma x squared is 289. Sigma y squared is 326. And finally, sigma xy is 294. So notice at this point, we have everything we need to solve the problem. Sigma x is 39, sigma y, 42, sigma x squared, 289, sigma y squared, 326, and finally, sigma xy, 
294. And now it becomes a simple matter of plugging and chugging, and that's where we love to be because that's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and set up our problem here. So in the numerator, we have n times sigma xy. That's going to be 6 times 294 minus sigma x times sigma y, which is going to be 39 times 42. And now we have the denominator, which is pretty ugly, but it's the same idea. It's just going to be plugging and chugging. Don't forget the square root. That's the first step, and I often see people making that mistake, and it costs them the problem. So square root of whatever follows. So here we have n times sigma x squared, so 6 times 289 minus, notice the parentheses here, very important, sigma x, pause, squared. So we're not going to put 289, we're going to put 39 squared, 39 squared. And now we're going to do the same for y. We have 6 times sigma y squared, 326, minus sigma y, again, pause, squared. So we're going to put 42 squared here. Okay, and if you were to reduce this down, you can plug it all into your calculator at once, but I would really recommend reducing in steps, doing this multiplication and then this one, and then subtracting and doing these step by step as well. I see a lot of mistakes too when people try and do it all at once, but you certainly can if you want. If you reduce this down, you would find that the correlation is 0.62 a strong positive correlation. So congratulations, you just computed your first correlation coefficient.